The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 164 Probably Classified Do I wish to hear about the latest in Susan weapon prototyping? Gerardo cocked his head, making a show of thinking. Well, I can't say that wouldn't be interesting. Please do tell. Perfection! Livewire slammed both hooves on the table, eliciting a chuckle from Egel and a dubious recoil from Offswitch. Now, I was in a lab yesterday making adjustments to a new master die for mana cannon compression chambers, which are down to science enough that a hair's width could make them explode the bad way. And shut up, Grenell, I know how rare it is to hear me say that. Anyway, uh, colleague had noticed that the firing nozzle on the casting machine was cracked and neglected to tell me until I already had a new vat on entwinement glue heating and that is the end result of a three week process that you really don't want to try stopping after it started. So I was trying to get the filament that had already been fed out without pulling any- Hey, you. Off switch cut him off with a rasp, thick scarf shifting slightly as his head turned. Look at the griffin's eyes. See that sheen of glass? It means you're losing him. Tell a story you don't need a background to understand. Livewire blinked owlishly, broad mouth frowning at his companion. Once, I discovered that putting two cannons on your back gives twice as much firepower as one. They said it wasn't an original discovery, but it sure worked well. I see, Gerardo replied, remarkably sophisticated. Though, while I do indeed lack the background to understand most of this technology, I'm hardly opposed to hearing about it. You should take him to the testing range, Crennel offered, speaking in slow motion. That could be interesting. Livewire's grin broadened and he rubbed his hooves. Hey, Gerardo, down for a little explosive demonstration? You know, ah, man. Abandoning his seat, Egel rose and moved to join him, bumping a meaty hoof. No, Offswitch grumbled, nevertheless rising too and moving to follow the group. Well, I suppose I might as well oblige. Game for anything that didn't involve being exploded himself, Gerardo neatly shoved his stool under the table where it wouldn't get in the way and stretched, vaguely aware of the amount of ponies at other tables paying him attention. It wasn't many, since there weren't many left in the bar, but it was enough to give him a tingling impression of being famous. Might I ask that one of you lead the way? Leading like a bad oil level leads you to the supply room. Live wires strode ahead, pushing open the door to the corridors with a bombastic red aura and motioning for the rest to follow. They slipped through the door and it swung closed behind them, leaving a lone crenel happily nursing free forgotten drinks because it would have been a shame to let him go to waste. Another door flung open into a deep, straight, iron-walled chamber that looked like it had once been used for cooling and ventilation equipment. Great sections of air ducts hung from the sides where they had been magically sawed off, and the majority of the room was taken up by a balcony overlooking a reinforced, burn-resistant track. Live wire unlocked a sizable cabinet with his horn, its face rolling aside to reveal rack upon rack of blasters, launchers, lasers, stabbers, slicers, choppers, clubbers, whackers, and other assorted lawn care implements. Any of these look fun to you, Gerardo? He offered confidently. I know I can think of some ones to recommend. As a square cube that slightly resembled a bucket tumbled in its aura like a ball spun on a hoof, Gerardo squinted. Truthfully, I have no idea what to look for. Have you any you are particularly proud of yourself? There's not really all that much here we made, Egel answered, shoving his girl through the testing rage door. Most of these finished products here are from the other two factories. Mobius has us doing more preliminary research, proof of concept types of deals, and who knows what happens with that. Shine Spark, off switch, coolly replied, standing near the wall, mane long and black. She's the one who controls everything here. Mobius isn't the stallion he once was, so anytime someone is doing something and you can't see who, it's Shine Spark. Well, we do have these. Livewire shrugged, pulling out something that looked like a brass snail shell the size of a pony's head. They're made here by us. Are they now? Politely, Gerardo did his best to keep the conversation moving. What does that one do, if I may? Livewire grinned. Egel, mind playing the good guy again today? 
Ego shook his head, taking the machine and its aura and moving toward a staircase to the track below. You enjoy your job far too much sometimes, bud. We all have our ways of coping. Shrugging, Livewire pulled out a turret with a long, slim barrel and several concentric rings attached to a wide nozzle. Better than doing nothing all day. On guard! He followed Egel to the floor, and Gerardo peered at them over the railing in morbid fascination and suspense. Were the weapons really suited for a head-on duel? You may want to cover your eyes, Offswitch murmured, shuffling up beside him. That long one makes a very big flash. I should like to think I'll be all right, Gerardo assured with a smile, nevertheless holding a wing near his face in case he needed to duck behind it at a moment's notice. With a small crackle of lightning, Livewire's weapon charged a fire, aimed squarely at Egel, and then let loose. A single, blinding, razor-thin beam streaked instantaneously from its end, moving so quickly it might have not have been traveling at all so much as springing into existence already spanning the gap between it and its target. Gerardo barely had time to blink before it splintered violently, however, filling the room with the sound of metal striking metal. Egel held a shell protectively in front, and a broad umbrella of energy streamed from the hole, mushrooming out into a wall that broke the beam's advance. His portable shield sparked and crackled, yet held firm, its cracked surface glossing over and returning to pristine seconds after Livewire's beam finally ended. The attacking unicorn tossed down his laser and grinned. How about that, Gerardo? Impressive? Verily, Gerardo called back, unsure entirely what else to say. This thing, Egel huffed after a moment of climbing, trying to get back on the overlook really. Developed completely in-house with work from Shine Spark herself. The Defense Force contract that funds us doesn't contain any specifics, Offswitch interrupted. We can make what we want, or what the Chiefs want at least. It's a good sign for integrity when a pony asks to make a weapon for a war she doesn't believe in, brings your shield instead of a sword. Now, now, while we're showing off the shield, Livewire interrupted, sticking his head up above the railing. What say we show off some of the rest? I'm very partial to cannons myself, but it's not too much of a stretch to show it off against melee instead. End of chapter 164